Remember Beyblades? The thing where you throw two spinning tops at each other and see which one stops spinning first? I was super into them as a kid when they first came out. They were genuinely a lot of fun. There was a ton of them you could buy and collect, there was an anime, and there was a video game. The one I have is Beyblade on the PS1, often referred to online as Beyblade Let It Rip but I think it's just called Beyblade. This game is terrible, and I was gonna make a whole script and video about it, but when I was looking stuff up about the game, I found that the perfect script was already written. It's actually the review for the game from IGN back in the day, and I think it might be the best review ever written. So I'm just gonna read that. Beyblade, the best spinning top fighting game ever. Beyblade is quite an interesting concept. Competitors do battle in an arena with their Beyblades. Beyblades are essentially tops with beasts embedded in their bits. These bit beasts invoke powers from ancient creatures including dragons, bears, and monkeys. They use their special powers to destroy opposing blades and make themselves virtually unbeatable. Beyblade is a children's television show in a somewhat similar vein to Pokemon. It involves a handful of young competitors hoping to become Beyblade champions. The competitions are somewhat similar also as the Beybladers practice up their skills in an attempt to achieve greatness and win the championship, but ultimately rely on the Beyblade to win the battle for itself. The point of Beyblade the game is that you'll attempt to take your way through a tournament in order to win the Beyblade Championship. You're able to upgrade your Beyblader as well as the Beyblade itself as you earn Bay points and experience along the way. Beyblade gives you an overwhelming two entire ways to play the game. After cycling through the massive menu, we've discovered that you're either able to enter a tournament or take part in a free battle. This may seem like an exceedingly complicated choice to make, but it's actually quite simple. If you only want to play one game at a time, then you'll pick free battle. If you want to play a handful of games in a tournament, then by all means choose that option. If you select free battle and had intended to win a shiny trophy, you'll be sadly mistaken and morally crushed. Luckily, we've taken the time to figure out what these options do, and now that you know, you'll never have to make that humiliating mistake. The battles in Beyblade are intense, long, and incredibly challenging. The start of the battle requires you to choose how hard you'll pull the ripcord. That's the pokey teeth thing that makes some top spin. A meter will start moving, and if you're of incredible dexterity and have the reflexes of a fox, you'll be able to push a button and make your top spin out into the massive battle bowl. Once inside the bowl, things only get more complicated. Using the left analog stick will allow you to change the direction that your top is spinning. When the tops are about to collide, pressing X will absorb some of the damage you'll take and will keep your top spinning longer. If that already seems complicated, then dear god watch out because it only gets worse. The square, triangle, and circle buttons will invoke a special attack from your bit beast. When that happens, get ready to be amazed. It's amazing! Your bit beast will perform one of a few different attacks on your dastardly opponent. It can hit them from one way, or it can hit them from an entirely different angle. Watch as your bit beast runs into your opponent. They'll take damage from your bit beast attack, and the top may eventually break. If they run out of tops before the match is over, they have to quit. Exciting! Breaking someone else's top isn't the only way to finish a match in Beyblade, though. Oh no, it gets even better than that. If their top stops spinning, you win! Also, if their top leaves the arena for any reason, be it from your amazing skill to steer a top into another, or their complete incompetence to steer their own top, then you'll also win. What fun would ramming two tops into each other be without the ability to upgrade them with completely inane gadgets? That's right, none! Luckily, Beyblade includes all of the absurd gadgets that you love to purchase, just like in real life. You can put different weights on your blade, get different things to spin your blade with, and even get more Beyblades to send into ruthless battle. It's easy to sit down and judge how realistically a car we've never driven in real life handles in a driving game, but determining whether a top spins correctly or not is something way out of our league. We sought out the help of Dr. C. Mike Croc due to his expertise in the field of fighting tops. Dr. Croc has a PhD in both top fightology, the study of fighting tops while used as weapons, as well as basket weaving, so we figured he'd be an excellent consultant on the accuracy of Beyblade's physics. Attempting to accurately model the physics of a fighting top is something not to be taken lightly, said Dr. Croc, and without the use of advanced supercomputers, it's practically impossible. There is ongoing work at the Bonsai Institute to do such a thing, but even they have yet to reach a satisfactory result. The question still exists though. How accurately does Beyblade mimic the physics behind a fighting top with some sort of otherworldly beast hidden inside its bit? It works on a basic level, though I laugh at its attempt at gyroscopic inertial displacement. Their work on the top's vetronomically gravitational impulsion is functional on some level though. From what we can decipher from Dr. Croc's Smarty Man talk, it seems he thinks the tops work somewhat realistically. From our experience, we're inclined to agree. The top seem to move in a rather circular, spirally fashion and spin around really fast. Seems right to us. Beyblade has some incredible graphics. 
It's amazing that they're able to find enough power inside the PSX to simulate spinning tops and draw them, but they've somehow done it. In fact, the blades are so realistic that you can actually see speed trails fly behind them as they move. It's incredible! The single digit number of colors on each blade is also of astounding art design. The incredible graphics don't stop with the tops, uh, blades though. The arena that they fight in is of completely amazing detail. The double digit polygons used to model it would have taken more than an hour to set up, which possibly could have caused the artist to miss lunch on the day that they made this game. Thank goodness they don't mind taking time to make things look great. The most amazing part about the game is that the actual stars of the show agreed to a special photo shoot so that they could appear in the game. They're all here for you to play as and take into incredible top battling action. They must have used the same photographer as they do while filming the show, since all the lighting and angles match what we're used to. I have to hand it to the designers for pulling out all the stops. The sound work in the game is peerless. You won't find another game on the market that is anywhere near the same quality as this. The soundtrack is an amazing mix of repetitive drums, shrieking synthesizers, and brain-pinching guitars. If you like the sound of fire alarms or nails across a chalkboard, this soundtrack will have you banging your head until it snaps off your neck. The voice acting is on a level that can't be reached even if you were to hire the best film school actors in existence. The way the announcer yells phrases like What a great song! Or What a sweet song! repeatedly is absolutely incredible. And by incredible, I mean that you won't be able to believe it. It's just that incredible! All sarcasm aside, this is an absolutely terrible game. There's a very small possibility that it might work if it was played with actual toys and you happen to be extremely bored, but as a video game, this concept is one of the worst ever thought of by mankind. There's absolutely nothing fun about trying to ram another top out of an arena. The bit beasts are almost completely useless since the matches almost always end up with someone flying out of the arena anyway. Playing this game instills a massive sense of confusion. Confusion as to why anyone would have thought this game should be made, confusion as to why anyone okayed the project to be shipped, and finally, confusion as to why anyone would be willing to waste their money so easily by not returning this to the store as quickly as possible. 1.5. Unbearable. Thank you, Chris Roper. I just needed to share this experience with the whole world.